Mad Bhagavatam Prantaraja Ki Jai Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Chanmad Yasya Yato Nivyad Itaratas Chartesu Avigyaswarat Chanmad Yasya Yatam Vayan Itaratas Chartesu Avigyaswarat Tene Brahma Hirdaya Adikavaye Muyantiyat Surayaha Tene Brahma Hirdaya Adikavaye Tejo vari medam yata vini mayo yatra trisargo visha. Tejo vari medam yata vini mayo yatra trisargo visha. Damna svena sada nirasta kuhakam satyam param di mahi. Damna svena sada nirasta kuhakam satyam param di mahi. O my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O my Lord, Sri Krishna, son of Vasudeva. O all pervading personality Godhead. I offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. Is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji, the original living being? By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations, of water seen on fire or land seen on water. Only because of him do the material universes, temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature, appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Pujita Kaitra Votra Paramo Nirmatsaranam Satam Vedyam Vastava Matra Vastu Shivadam Tapa Trayon Mulanam Shrimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimva Purer Ishwaraha Sadyo Hridi Avurudyate Itra Kriti Bihi Susu Subhistakshana Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpataror galitam falam. Sukamukad Amrita Dravya Samyutam Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam Mahur Ahorasika Bhuvi Bhavukaha O expert and thoughtful man, relish Srimad Bhagavatam. The, the mature fruit of the desire to Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. 
although its nectarine juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Hediantak Stobadrani Vidu Noti Suhitsatam To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best-wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta preesu badresu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naistiki In this way, a devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him I'm sorry. In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge as he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhavo kama lo badayas chaye cheta etarinavidam sitvan sattve prasidati by development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance. And thus, material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso bhagavat bhakti yogataha bhagavat tattva vijnana mukta sangasya jayate when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness, becomes enlivened by devotional service, and understands the science of God perfectly. Chidyante Samrasamsaya Shiyante Chashikarmani Juste Evatmanishwari Thus the Bhakti Yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come at once to the stage of a samsayam samagram, understanding of the supreme personality, uh, I'm sorry, understanding of the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, chapter 13, verse number 47. Ahastani sahastanam Apadani chatuspadam Falguni tatra mahatam Jivo jiva shajivanam This is a famous verse Prabhupada often quotes. Those who are devoid of hands are prey for those who have hands. Those devoid of legs are prey for the four-legged. The weak are the subs subsistence of the strong, and the general rule holds that one living being is food for another. Purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada. 
A systematic law of subsistence in the struggle for existence is there by the supreme will. And there is no escape for anyone by any amount of planning. The living beings who have come to the material world against the will of the supreme being are under the control of a supreme power called Maya Shakti, the deputed agent of the Lord. And this Daivi Maya is meant to pinch the conditioned souls by the threefold miseries, one of which is explained here in the verse, the weak are the subsistence of the strong. No one is strong enough to protect himself from the onslaught of a stronger. And by the will of the Lord, there are systematic categories of the weak, the stronger and the strongest. There is nothing to be lamented if a tiger eats a weaker animal, including a man, because that is the law of the Supreme Lord. But although the law states that a human being must subsist on another living being, there is the law of good sense also. For the human being is meant to obey the laws of the scriptures. This is impossible for other animals. The human being is meant for self-realization. And for that purpose, he is not to eat anything which is not first offered to the Lord. The Lord accepts from his devotee all kinds of food preparations made of vegetables, fruits, leaves, and grains. Fruits, leaves, and milk in different varieties can be offered to the Lord. And after the Lord accepts the foodstuff, the devotee can partake of the prashada by which all suffering in the struggle for existence will be gradually mitigated. This is confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 9.26. Even those who are accustomed to eat animals can offer foodstuff, not to the Lord directly, but to an agent of the Lord under the certain conditions of religious rites. Injunctions of the scriptures are meant not to encourage the eaters of animals, but to restrict them by regulated principles. The living being is the source of subsistence for other, stronger living beings. No one should be very anxious for his subsistence in any circumstances because there are living beings everywhere and no living being strives for want of food at any place. Maharaj Yudhisthira is advised by Narada not to worry about his uncle's suffering for want of food, for they could live on vegetables available in the jungles as prashada of the Supreme Lord and thus realize the path of salvation. Exploitation of the weaker living being by the stronger is the natural law of existence. There is always an attempt to devour the weak in different kingdoms of living beings. There is no possibility of checking the tendency by any artificial means under material conditions. It can be checked only by awakening the spiritual sense of the human being, by practice of spiritual regulations. The spiritual regulative principles, however, do not allow a man to slaughter a weaker, weaker animal on one side and teach others peaceful coexistence. <laughs> if man does not allow the animals peaceful coexistence, how can he expect peaceful existence in human society? The blind leaders must therefore understand the supreme being and then try to implement the, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, or Rama Raja, is impossible without the awakening of God consciousness in the mass mind of the people of the world. Shimad Bhagavatam Kuntaraja Kisei. So this is a wonderful purport by Srila Prabhupada explains. Laws of nature, but there's something else also, and that is the law of good sense. That's the first time I've heard that. 
from Srila Prabhupada. So, this law of good sense uh, is above the law of nature. What's the law of nature? The weak are the subsistence of the strong. That's the law of nature. Or the general rule holds that one living being is food for another. However, there is this uh, law of good sense because human beings are not animals or they're not supposed to be animals. They can act like animals, that's for sure, but they're not supposed to be. They are supposed to differentiate themselves from animals by obeying the laws of the scriptures, which is impossible for the animals. And why is that? Because the human form is meant for self-realization. It's not meant for self-indulgence. It's not meant for engaging in the law of the jungle. The stronger eat the weaker, or the stronger exploit the weaker, etc. <clears throat> and for that purpose, one should not eat anything that's not offered first to the Lord. And Prabhupada explains here, the Lord accepts from his devotee all kinds of food preparations made of vegetables, fruits, leaves, and grains. Fruits, leaves, and milk in different varieties can be offered to the Lord. And after the Lord accepts the food stuff, the devotee can partake of the prashada by which all struggle, all suffering in the struggle for existence will be gradually mitigated. Now, this is a very important point. We should note this. There is a general difference. There's, a, there's a, a, an amazing difference between food and prashada. Just eating food, that's an animal behavior. But respecting prashada is a divine act. And it differentiates a human being from an animal. And thus... Uh, by taking only prasadam, gradually all suffering in a struggle for existence will be gradually mitigated. What is the struggle for existence? The struggle for existence is we are trying to overcome the laws of material nature, which is impossible, and therefore we're always struggling due to our desire to dominate material nature, due to our desire to exploit material nature, and due to our desire to be the enjoyer rather than the servant. So when that mentality is purified and we desire to be the servant to the Lord rather than the Lord, and rather than the competitor of the Lord, then the struggle for existence becomes uh, reduced to, uh, or, or you can say the suffering due to the struggle for ex resistance, uh, existence goes away. We're no longer trying to control the material nature, which includes people, for our sense gratification. We have a natural tendency, therefore, to be the servant of the Lord and to offer everything first to the Lord and only those things that are acceptable to the Lord and follow the, law, the rules of, of uh, regulated life according to scripture. Now, people that insist on eating meat can do it, but it has to be in a very restricted way where you can only kill one black goat on the full moon night and you have to repeat a mantra. And you have to kill it. You can't have somebody else kill it. And then you have to uh, see the bloodshed and the, and the, and the gore and the, and the horror. Uh, and you have to skin the animal and clean the intestines and the stool and all that stuff. <laughs> it's a horrible experience. And you have to say the mantra. Uh, Mamsa Kaditi Mamsa, which means I am killing you now, and in the next life, you will kill me in the same way. 
So what's, why is all this uh, ritualized killing permitted? Because eventually you realize, wait a minute, this mantra says I'm going to take birth again and I'm going to be killed in the same way as I'm killing this animal. And probably as many times as I'm killing animals. So wait a minute, I should stop this. This is crazy. See? So there's a chance for a living entity by this restricted means of eating meat to come to their con to come to their senses and say, "I'm not going to do this anymore. This is crazy. I'm I'm condemning myself by this act." But if you just go walk into the Safeway or Fred Meyer and buy a piece of meat, take it home and cook it and eat it, there's no possibility of becoming a devotee because it's a barbarian act not meant for a human being. <clears throat> We're not meant to be barbarians. We're, <laughs> we're meant to be uh, devotees of the Lord. That's our eternal position. So unless we accept regulated principles based on the Shastra and overseen by bona fide gurus, we remain an animal. And we remain in the struggle for existence, and we re we suffer all kinds of miseries, adhyatmika, adibodhika, adhidevika, in the struggle for existence. So one time there was a, a guru, but he wasn't not really a guru. He was, he was a false leader, and he was teaching a group of young boys what is life. So how did he teach them? They all had to carry a very heavy burden during the scorching sun in midday. And they had to repeat a mantra. This is life. So here you have this group of boys carrying these very, very heavy, actually it was type it was, it was rocks. And they were marching in unison their back straight like this with this back bending weight and they're saying this is life this is life this is life so they were walking on on the uh, near the bank of a river and the other side of the river was a group of devotees nicely shaved up and dressed nicely in saffron and chanting Hare Krishna and those boys were saying, this is life, this is life. And they were saying, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, and dancing and jumping up and down and all happy. And the boys noticed this, and the, and the leader said, don't look at them, they're crazy. So everyone, you know, got scared and stopped looking at them. But one boy kept looking at them. And then the devotee said, what are you doing? This, that's not life, that's suffering. Throw the rocks away and swim across the river and join us. So the, the, the so-called leader said, Don't listen to them. They're lying. They don't know what they're talking about. This is life. This is life. So what happened? One of the boys said, This is not life. This is crazy. He threw the rocks down and he jumped in the river and swam across. And then the leader said, that guy is, is not a real person. He's a coward. Don't, don't do what he did. Carry this. Carry this burden. This is life. This is life. So the other boys kept carrying the burden. And that one boy crossed over and started jumping up and down and chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So this is not life. You're not meant to struggle for existence. You're, you have an eternal soul. You don't have to struggle for existence. But if you want to uh, dominate some part of nature and people, and exploit them for your own sense gratification, you want to be the purusha instead of the prakriti, then you're going to suffer. But if you say, no, my position, uh, gopi bhartu, dasa kamalam, dasa dasa, Dasana dasa. I'm the eternal servant of the 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 infinitum of the gopis of Vrindavan who are the sincere servants of Krishna. That's my position. So unless we come to that understanding, we just suffer. Unnecessarily. 
The whole thing is unnecessary. Birth, death, old age, and disease. So, otherwise, we're going to be in this struggle for existence. And in the struggle for existence, there are tigers. There are uh, wild, uncivilized people. And there is constant fighting and so forth. So we can get out of that crazy struggle for existence with all this competition where the stronger eat the weaker or the stronger exploit the weaker by Krishna consciousness. Otherwise, we're going to be stuck in that uh, terrible, uh, terrible, terrible situation of constant struggle for existence. So, uh, no one should be very anxious for his subsistence in any circumstances because there are living beings everywhere and no living being starves for want of food at any place. Yeah. You don't even have to grow your own food. If you have a little bit of knowledge, you can pick. You can go wild picking all over the place, especially in summertime. And there are three, three seasons of the year you can wild pick food. Uh, growing wild in parks and forests and things like that. You just need a little bit of knowledge to recognize what plants are edible. And there are many of them that are edible. And if you're not sure, then just watch the rabbits. Whatever they eat, you can eat. <laughs> yeah, one time I was watching a, a rabbit and he was eating the yellow flowers of this uh, very invasive uh, plant that's all over the place. And I always thought, you know, that it was not edible. But I saw the rabbit eating it, so I, was, I said, well, let me try and see what it's like. So I, I ate some of those flowers, and they were really good, very nutritious. Then I realized, well, if it's good for the rabbit, it's good for me, you know. So, therefore, Maharaj Yudhisthira is advised by Narada not to worry about his uncle's suffering for want of food, for they could live on vegetables available in the jungles as prasada of the Supreme Lord and thus realize the path of salvation. So Prabhupada says, exploitation of the weaker living being by the stronger is the natural law of existence. Yes, so that's why it says, Hastani sahastanam apadani chatuspadam falguni tatramahatam jivo jiva shijivanam. So that last line is very significant, which is the general rule holds that one living being is food for another. However, uh, you can't check this by any artificial means under material condition. That is, you know, you, you know. Uh, Black Lives Matter is not going to change anything, right? Because let's say the Black Lives Matter and they take over the United States. It could happen. But then they're going to exploit each other. Just like in Africa, who were the people who were selling the slaves to the English and others? They were, they were black people who were selling, or most of them were Muslims also. They were, they were capturing... Uh, other black uh, natives in Africa and selling them. Is this true? Do you know that history? Yeah. So, uh, it, it just like right now, you see, the most black men are killed by other black men. It's not that white men are slaughtering black people. All right, there are some instances of policemen, white policemen that are uh, out of control. But it's not the general rule. Every day, black men are killing black men in the United States because of drugs and other things. So, uh, you, in, in the same way, like for example, if you look in Jewish history, you read the Bible, you'll see that the Jews were their own worst enemies because they... Uh, especially in the second kingdom, it's in the Bible, the Old Testament, they started to disobey God's laws. After they were given the holy land, the, the land of milk and honey, so-called Israel, they, they came out of servitude and slavery in, in Egypt, and they conquered the, 
this land from the Canaanians who were native there and they basically slaughtered them and took over Israel. And then as time went on, they adopted some of the habits of the people they, they uh, conquered and stopped uh, following the, their rules of uh, religion. And eventually they were put into slavery again by the uh, Persians. And they had to leave. The temple was destroyed. So you see, and they were their worst enemy. So th this, this whole idea that uh, people uh, are, uh, certain people are dominators and other people are, are like uh, their victims. But as soon as they have freedom, they victimize each other. Because it's the general rule that one living being is food for another or the stronger will always exploit the weaker. That's the law of nature. That's part of the struggle for existence. It's only when we give up the desire to be the purusha and accept that we're the eternal prakriti or servants of the Lord that this struggle for existence, this jungle law of the big fish eats the little fish or the big monkey eats the little monkey, etc., stops. So, if man does not allow the animals peaceful coexistence, how can he expect peaceful existence in human society? The blind leaders must therefore understand the supreme being and then try to implement the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, or Ram Raja, is impossible without the awakening of God consciousness in the mass mind of the people of the world. So this is, should be our preaching strategy. We should explain to people... It's, it's not that this, you vote for one party and, and the one party is evil, the other party is good. They're both evil. They both have the same problem. They're eating meat, they're engaging in illicit sex, gambling, intoxication. How can they solve any problems? They themselves are the problem. So we have to be strong enough to present this message as Prabhupada has presented it here, to the general public. If we do this in a coherent and very convincing way, there's a possibility that we could start a mass movement like this, especially in the present atmosphere of uh, extreme anxiety and fear because of the breakdown of the United States. All glories to Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Are there any questions, comments, or confessions? No, I'm just kidding. No confessions. Yeah, body and mind. Yeah, yes. How are you made weaker? You go to public schools, and they teach you to be a slave by giving misinformation and they teach you that the goal of life is sense gratification and the way to get it is getting more degrees the more degrees you have the more sense gratification you'll have so their so-called education is actually a curse because you'll work like a slave the rest of your life and you waste your time on sense gratification. And say, so they they weaken the mind of people. They weaken their reserve, their their, their resolve to follow regulative principles. Or if they're regulated, it's regulated for sense gratification. Like this one guy, uh, his name was Gulbenkian. He's an Armenian guy. He was the richest man in the world in, in the... Uh, beginning of the 20th century. They called him Mr. 5%. 5% of all the oil that came out of the Middle East, he received. Because he was, in the Ottoman Empire, he was a, a type of uh, engineer that uh, uh, was in control of the ge geological um, exploration of Saudi Arabia and other Middle Eastern countries for, for oil. They did a large study. And he had all those, uh, all, that, all that information. 
because he was in charge of that particular part of the Ottoman uh, government. And when the Ottoman government uh, folded, when it, it, it collapsed, uh, they, the, the British and the others, they had to make a contract with him that they would give him 5% of all the oil that came out of the Middle East if, they, if he would share all that information with them. Now, he didn't know anything about oil, actually. It was, I mean, and, and at that time, it was just beginning to get really big, right? So this guy was very, very disciplined. He would only eat one pound of food. So he had a sc little scale, and he always would weigh his food. That's how disciplined it was, right? But his life was also uh, full of uh, tragedy in other ways. Anyway, I won't go into the whole story. But uh, you see, when you become a convinced in s for sense gratification, you also become regulated. But regulated for sense gratification, not for uh, self-purification. So this man was very regulated, followed rules, right? but uh, it was only for his own sense gratification. So we should follow the rules and regulations for self-realization and Krishna consciousness. All glories to Srila Prabhupada ki jai. Yes, it is. Yeah, it slaughters your desire for spirituality and and really supports the idea of eat, sleep, and be merry. You know, just sense gratification. That's the real purpose why they're giving that education, so that people become consumers and buy all kinds of things that you don't really need. It's like, they're manufacturing so many things. They have to sell it, right? So they convince people that you need these things, like cell phones and telephones and cars and all these things. But in reality, I mean, you can use those things properly, but most people don't use them properly. They just use them for sense gratification. See? So basically, it's not necessary. People live without them for hundreds of millions of years. Right? It's only in the last, you know, hundred years that these things have become important. Hare Krishna, Ogre's problem. Yeah. So last, last thing. You see, one thing that I find crazy in the world, that uh, when something happens between two uh, group of people, communities, that you mentioned, right? Yeah. It doesn't matter what color they are, yeah. what race they are, but, but what religion. But Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Indian, we know very well about caste system. Yes. Yes. And why they make it one, one thing? I mean, they magnify one system. The system is everywhere. Well, because it's the rule of nature, the strong will exploit the weak. Yeah, but it's everywhere, Maharaj. No, because, because of sense gratification. All wars are wars of sense gratification. Like the Jews, they want to have that land for their type of sense gratification. And the Palestinians, they want to have that land for their sense gratification. And in Kashmir, Indian Kashmir, it's a war of sense gratification. The Muslims want to have sense gratification their way. And the Hindus want to have sense gratification their way. They were fighting. The struggle for existence is everywhere, in every race, in every ethnicity, in every country. But within the same race, there's also the same system. Yeah, in every race. The nation, the, yes. Uh, you know, the, the strong will always exploit domination. the weak. Yeah. That's what Prabhupada says. The general rule holds that one living being is food for another. Mm. Or that a systematic law of subsistence in the struggle for existence is there by the supreme will. So the idea is not to be in the struggle for existence. You don't have to struggle for existence. You're eternal, right? But if you want to...
be separate for Krishna, then it's going to be always a struggle. It's, it's pretty simple to understand, but, but people are programmed not to understand this simple thing. You can explain this to people. Go out and explain it to people. They're not going to change right away. Very few of them will change. Just like, this is life. This is life. Carry the stones. This is life. Right? It's not life. Yeah. It's no conditioning. Way. It's yeah. terrible. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes people, they have a good intention. You know, they have a very good intention to be nice. That's natural. But no, no, wait a minute. They're nice because they'll get more sense gratification. They can, yeah. Some people, they try to no, like for example, mm -hmm. a, a pedophile. They know how to groom kids. Or uh, certain types of rapists. They know how to groom people. They train, they, they give them gifts. They speak nicely to them. They'll go on the internet and they'll speak really nicely to people and then they'll give them some gifts. And then eventually they meet them and then they take, take advantage of them. It's happening all the time. You know? And then, uh, if you ever read the book, How to Make Friends, uh, no, uh, by Dale Carnegie. Uh, I forget the title of the book. How to Make Friends and Be Successful, basically, is the title. So, that book is all about this fake culture where you speak nicely, you do favors, you do this, you do that, in order to get ahead in life materially see. so people that used to be one of the most popular books read by people in the 40s and 50s and 60s I forget the title now you don't have to think about it again how to make friends I'll look it up how to make friends and uh, succeed in life basically the whole thing is phony but it's a technique but behind it is sense gratification. Yeah. But then you say, like, I come just incredible. People, they, you know, we have this problem everywhere in society. But Krishna Kansha is such a solution to it. But nobody. I wish we could have somebody kind of represent us in the, I don't know, in the nation. You know, to, no, when you say, wait, we're supposed to be that somebody. We are supposed to be that somebody. We are supposed to be yeah, that we, somebody. We, but, but our voice is not heard. We're not trying hard enough. See, I mean, the personality that Prabhupada was, obviously, you know, from the spiritual world, of course, some people... Probably... We're not trying hard enough. First of all, it's not clear how to do it. This purport today is very clear. This is it. This, see, this, this, the whole point is the struggle for existence. You build the black form, the pla platform. You have to build it. You have, well, we haven't, we don't have a general who's, uh, you know, able to rally the troops. But, but you don't give up. You have to keep trying. It's by massive Sankirtan and massive Prashadam distribution. That's the way. There's no doubt about it. Massive Sankirtan and massive Prashadam distribution. That's the way. That, that's the way you'll get the message out. So people will come to you eventually and say, okay, you've done all this good for us for many, many years. You're not asking us to do anything. Is there anything we can do? Just like when Prabhupada started the movement, he didn't say you have to follow rules. He just was chanting and giving some prasadam. At first it was just a little piece of an apple, but eventually it became rotis, uh, you know, japatis, and dal, and sabji, and then at a certain point, the devotee said, well, Prabhupada, are there any rules? He said, oh, yes, there are. 
And then he wrote them down. And then they were sorry they asked in many ways. But uh, see, he won them over by affection, not by dictate. That's the, that's the key. Man, I think people, they need to be cheated. I think that's all. They want to be cheated. Because sometimes they listen, they listen to some people. Like, you know, this guy, Sadhguru. Now listen, listen to me. Prabhupada won them over by affection, not by dictate. And then they finally asked him, are there any rules? And then he gave the rules. But now they followed because of, of affection. So we have to be engaged in genuine acts of compassion for the public. And eventually, some people are going to ask us, you know, how come you guys are so good? Those, those are nonsense so organizations. Yeah. If you get this food for life, for instance, yeah. well structured, you know, we we'll make it like a huge organization recognized by like a new nation. You know, that can, can, can make a difference. Look, we're trying to do that. That's why we just bought our second food truck. And then we're going to get a third one and a fourth one. And a fifth. By the time we have 10 of them going out every day, it's going to make a major influence on people. And along with the food jug, there should be kirtan and, and book distribution. And eventually, people are going to catch on. I'm so, talking maybe, maybe it's, it's on general. Like, if you insert, you're, doing, you're doing your best in here. But it's, it's going to be international. So if you can come together and create a very one, Well, they have uh, India is doing massive uh, food distribution. It takes time, Prabhu. You have to, you know, the Catholic Church has been around uh, 1,700 years. And they have all kinds of charity organizations. Their, their budget in the United States is is uh, two billion dollars two billion dollars right and that's only for charity it doesn't count the churches and all these other things so their assets are phenomenal and they built it up it's over 1700 years See, we've only been around a little more than 50 years it's going to take time and they've had a lot of dynamic uh, saints in their in their organization. Yeah, what I think my basically uh, people that like cheap 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 way of doing things because they like said on the book are very clear. When you are affectionate, loving, then family people came to know about the rules to be followed. And but in general people they people they're lazy, they want cheap things. Like they well, yeah, that's, you have to follow the regulative principles. Right. So the people who find the Anyway, we have two weapons. It's called Sankirtan and Prashadam. Yes. That's all. It's very simple. Just expand those two things. Everything will be come to the right position. You have to expand it. You see what's happened with this COVID, COVID, the Sankatan stopped. You see how it's planned. So we should start it again. 
I mean, we didn't stop the food distribution, prasadam distribution, but it stopped the sankirtan. So now we should start it up again. Huh? For reculer pour mieux sauter, yeah. Sometimes you have to have a strategic retreat in order to attack better, yeah. But we, we, we have to stop the strategic retreat now. We have to start attacking again. Exactly. Yeah. Then we'll be more, more notified. If you do this time, people will, will attract more people. Well, the, these are the two astras, the two ways that we can expand the movement. Sankirtan and Prashadam. So let's just focus on that. It's pretty simple. Absolutely. Haribo. You have to start going out every weekend. Or every yeah. day. Once, every day. Yeah, we can go out now. Okay. We just have to have masks, that's all. Yes. Yeah. The way we spread this movement in the beginning was, just was doing sankirtan and prasadam. That was it. Now we have a food truck. We need just to organize. When the food truck is there, we have the team of sankirtan. And when the prasadam distribution is in, in is going on, they keep them. That's why I do when I go back. We have to do... This is the best time. With this weather, you can sit... Set out a rug, play the harmonium, sing. People are hearing only them, they even push out them. Yeah, well, we were doing that. We were doing that all the time before. We have to do it again. They don't have a team of the body. I need, I need, I mean, two, three, the bodies like this, without team or something. We have a, they're, they're there, and you just have to go out. Well, to do regular basis, you have to wear the mask because. Uh, you don't want to bring COVID back here. Yeah. All right, Haribo. Boys, Prabhupada, Harinam, Sankirtan, Ki Jai, Mahaprasad, Ki Jai.